And this is a tremendous opportunity to recognize the difference between the control you've gained because of the Botox injections and what you feel you might be losing as the Botox wears off. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Nick Housley with Modus Nova. I'm a licensed neurophysical therapist and neuroscientist helping brain injury survivors understand how to make functional gains after their injury. I hope this video helps you in your recovery. Yeah, I think there's one more thing we didn't talk about, and I sure. would imagine that some of you may have had in, in, injections into mm -hmm. muscles, usually something called Botox or botulinum toxin, which is designed to transiently, if you will, weaken uh, uh, muscles for varying periods of time. And that's a, it's a very fine gradation, so they can now demonstrate more movement without feeling that tone. And what will happen over time is that Botox wears off, you might start to feel that tone coming back. And this is a tremendous opportunity to recognize the difference between the control you've gained because of the Botox injections and what you feel you might be losing as the Botox wears off. You see, under those conditions where you still have some control, to see if you can build on that control even when you know that within a few months that Botox might not be as effective as it was before. Yeah, and this actually goes, we've talked about this a couple of times on Real Power Hour, um, Dr. Wolf, about sort of the interplay between um, these sort of pharmacologic management techniques, whether it's Botox or some systemic uh, backlifting or these sorts of things. Um, you know, there, are actually, there is a synergy between these, these approaches insofar as um, generally speaking, it's recommended to use these multimodal approaches when you're doing a pharmacologic approach like Botox, and then you pair it together with a rather intense rehab intervention program that, of course, needs to be predetermined in the time frame in which you can sort of after your injections, when do you need exactly to start that? That's going to be entirely dependent on you and your physician, your medical management team. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe to help other brain injury survivors learn how Modus Nova is changing neuro rehab. But generally speaking, it's really advantageous to have those things work synergistically. Um, so if you guys do find yourselves using Botox, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to use something like the Modus Hand at Home to really get the most out of that experience when you do have that sort of, as, as Dr. Wolf said, sort of a temporally um, or a temporary reduction in, in tone due to the Botox. Um, you know, for, basically it's, it's, it's a frank paralytic um, in terms of what it actually does. But it does, as Dr. Wolf suggests, um, uh, just temporarily weaken those muscles. And this actually goes into sort of another sort of question that emerged really quickly here from Donna about um, how does this help with mobility? And I think um, this is a natural progression in terms of um, in, ter in terms of, of, of improving your movement capabilities, re reducing tone. Um, those things are almost prerequisite for you to be able to regain volitional control of your hand uh, and your of your arm. And so I think once this, these, these things do not necessarily happen um, in isolation, right? As you begin to regain um, more range of motion um, and you begin to control those degrees of freedom, if you will, you'll be able to perform more dedicated um, functional tasks, which will then result in more mobility um, and more and more function. So I think that's a, it's a really good one. I think it, it pairs nicely, Donna, with um, our discussion about spasticity and tone. Um, and of course, generally speaking, um, in terms of the evidence, what we do typically, how we know it helps individuals with um, improved mobility of their upper extremities and function is we do um, these large clinical trials and we ask, frankly, very simple questions, but we do it in very discreet ways where we um, evaluate individuals' ability to do certain tasks um, prior to an intervention. Um, and then what we do is we ask them to perform a, uh, an experimental procedure, whether that's using standard rehab or rehab plus um, something like the robotic devices. And then we wait a period of time after they're done and we repeat those same measures and we see what kind of changes happen. And we can compare groups and we can ask very simple questions about, well, does, does one group improve more than the other or do they improve comparably? Um, and so from those studies, we can draw inferences about the changes that you could experience or the general strokes rubber could experience. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why it's very hard to make predictions because science doesn't tell us necessarily how me, I would improve after an allergic injury. It tells, um, it tells us how a general um, individual who has this type of stroke and these types of impairments would improve. So that's why it's another kind of challenge for us to give specific recommendations. Um, so thanks for that. Thanks for watching this video. If you have questions, 
or would like to speak with me about how you can make functional gains from home, call or text me at 404-939-3476 or visit modusnova.com contact.